Campfire Classics is a classic literature podcast. However, your hosts will occasionally use not-so-classy language and immature humor to describe very mature situations. As such, listener discretion is advised. Hi, I'm Ken Sandberg. And I'm Emily Bosco. Welcome to Campfire Classics, where we try to read those books that look really good on your shelf. And we have all the fun. This is a good song. I like this. I don't think not enough episodes start with a dance party. Thank you. Well, I'm feeling very musical today. I don't know why. Cool. Cool. I think. Yeah. I think. I think we're gonna have to start a new a new tradition where every episode just starts with a wild dance party, just absolute reckless abandon. So, (laughs) listener. Unless I have decided to edit this part out, you can dance to this music that I am inserting right now. Song. Uh, I'm probably going to attempt to remix what you just sang hey, into hey, hey, a hey, song. Hey. So dumb. <laughs> we'll, we'll see if that works. We'll you know see how ambitious I'm feeling later. <laughs> you know what it is? It's that I'm coming straight off of a workout. I just spent a little chunk of time on my exercise trampoline, which was a a real quarantine Ooh. purchase. <laughs> it's like, if I'm going to be inside for two years, damn it, I'm going to bounce. I'm going to bounce around and I'm going to call it exercise. Uh, and it was quite fun, but I, I did it to my workout playlist. So I think that's why I've got some music in my blood right now. Nice. I like yeah. it. Your energy's up. It's Your up. music is internally rolling. Yeah. Unlike Dear the last workout episode. trampoline companies. <laughs> If you would like to sponsor a podcast, <laughs> yo, that would be so great. Give Ken, give Ken a free one. <laughs> They're really fun, like unreasonably fun. <laughs> See, that right there is an example of the high quality type of advertising you will receive if you sponsor Campfire Classics. Yeah. Give it a shot. I'd love to be your spokesperson. <laughs> you know, if you're listening, which I'm sure you are. Yeah. I feel like trampoline salesmen are probably a high percentage of our listener base. Yeah, I, I would say that's a safe assumption. You right. know what phrase I, I can't get out of my head now, too? I don't know why. <laughs> but I I just, I'm thinking about trampolining, and I can't get the phrase titties akimbo out of my head. <laughs> what? <laughs> Titties akimbo. Uh, yeah. All I'm right. Just about awesome. That. <laughs> we just found the title of our episode. Love it. <laughs> well, and you know who also could be a sponsor is a sports bra company. That would be a good one too, because it keeps that would be place. a good one. But no, they 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 fly around. They fly around, which is kind of part of the fun of it. Honestly, it's just you're very free. You know, it's good that that is fun and not like horrifying and painful yeah yeah not for me not for me i'm not so endowed so it's fine <laughs> it's fine <Yeah>. for me <laughs> I, I can't speak for um bigger breasted gals but myself no issue <laughs> right. uh <sighs> sorry listener it's a lot of information for you but there it is it's out there so i Deal with uh, it. when when i go running i um i your, like your boobies the zombies run app and <laughs> There is a connection. Just like, give me 30 seconds to get there. Okay, I'm um, sorry. I use the Zombies Run app. And one of the things you do during Zombies Run is it lets you know when you have picked up supplies. And it's sort of, it's a, it's a video game-esque thing. You can turn in the supplies to increase the size of your base. It's a like city building portion of the app. Anyway, one of the supplies that you frequently pick up is sports bras. It's forever saying... Really? That's picked fun. Picked up a sports bra. Picked up a sports bra. That's so smart. Bra. Yeah. I mean, it's true. That's what you never see in those horror movies where these girls are like running around to avoid danger. They're usually in like whatever clothes they were in when the, the apocalyptic event happened, which is like mm-hmm. jeans and a whatever. But I'm like, man, you wish you were in workout clothes because that's hard to do. 
turn around. I'm, I, I, I'd be willing to bet that one of the first places, so the first place to get hit up in an apocalypse is going to be a grocery store. Yeah. Um, but I'm guessing something like a Dick's Sporting Good is going to be really close second. Well, probably Walmart and Target because they have a lot of that stuff plus food. But but sporting goods stores, they're going to yeah. get hit up pretty early on. Yeah, that's true. People are going to want to want to get clothes that they can move in. Women are going to want their sports bras. You don't want to go through the apocalypse with like an underwire digging into your ribs. No, underwire is, I don't, I don't fuck with it. <laughs> Just don't fuck with it <laughs> in general. <laughs> but especially not for um, escaping a, a life-threatening situation. No. No, (laughs) ma'am. So, dear camper, if the apocalypse were to hit tomorrow, after you go to the grocery store and steal all of the food you can, what is your apocalypse survival plan? What are the first couple of places you're going to hit up? I would really like to know. I, every time I make my way to a new city, I, I put together my sort of apocalypse escape route and my zombie survival plan and all that. So I would love to know what yours is. Uh, wherever you are and maybe we can team up we can we can let our plans be at cross purposes yeah (laughs) so this week when you email 5050 arts production at gmail.com or send a message to any of the campfire classics uh social media tell us what your apocalypse survival plan is yeah yeah if the world ends we can all band together safety in numbers plus we'll all have good stories to tell it's true because that's what we do around literal campfires because we'll probably be like setting garbage on fire in the streets to stay alive yeah it'll be there will be yeah yeah, trash campfires (laughs) i will be uh quickly making my way to some place that isn't iowa city because i am back in iowa listener and it is like six degrees outside right now (laughs) which is not a ton of fun so i'll be going somewhere where maybe a campfire isn't quite yeah. so necessary for survival was this podcast born in iowa i think so yay certainly we've recorded a lot of it from here oh yeah welcome home podcast yeah welcome back to iowa listeners <laughs> what's it like there? um what's going on it's cold <laughs> that's it <laughs> that's pretty much it um there was a little uh i'm house sitting in iowa we had a winter storm a couple of nights ago so i ended up shoveling the driveway like four times that was really exciting um <laughs> but fortunately the weather has gotten nicer and um i've mostly stayed inside yeah <laughs> that's it there's not much going on in iowa uh i've watched the entirety of loki and uh featuring I watched my, most... my husband tom hiddleston yes yeah yeah yeah, he oh. was great. Oh, he's my baby. So that makes cool. sense. Yeah, he was he was fantastic. <laughs> um, so congratulations to to both of you, I guess. Thank you. Yeah, I support I supported him a lot in that role, you know, just had yeah. to. Yeah, I was that was the backbone, you know, at home. I'd support him so he could go do his job well. So fabulous. Well, yeah. you you did. You did excellent work. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, all right. Um, well, that's ridiculous. So how about if we get to what we actually do? Because this show is not a Tom Hiddleston fan cast, much as it probably should be. Um, what it is, is a literary podcast where each week we cold read stories from the public domain um, straight from our eyes into your ears. And oftentimes things go wrong, but that's half the fun. Um before the story each week, I like to read some fun facts to sort of give us a little bit of background or maybe get us in the mood for the story that we're going to read. And that's what I'm going to do right now, because this week we're celebrating a birthday, actually several birthdays. As it turns out, Betty White would have turned 100 years old on the Monday before this episode drops or the day that we are recording this episode. As we're recording, it is Betty White's 100th birthday. A birthday that she shares with Muhammad Ali, Jim Carrey, Ben Franklin, and Al Capone. Oh my God. Yeah. But the birthday we're celebrating this week is actually the day after the episode drops, Wednesday, January 19th, a birthday shared with Pete Buttigieg, Dolly Parton, and Janis Joplin. Hmm. Happy birthday, Edgar Allan Poe. Yay! Yay, Poe! 
I'm not going to go into uh, deep detail about him since we've covered him a time or two in the past, but I do want to talk about one of Poe's most famous and mysterious birthday traditions, the Poe Toaster. What? Yeah. When I saw this, I really wanted it to be a machine for making Edgar Allan Poe shaped breakfast bread, Mm -hmm. but that's not it. Um, So sometime during the 1930s, starting in there somewhere, every year in the wee small hours of January 19th, a shadowy figure dressed in black with a wide brimmed hat and white scarf would visit the marker for Poe's original burial site in Baltimore, Maryland, pour himself a glass of cognac and raise a toast to Poe's memory, Mm -hmm. then vanish into the night, leaving three roses in a distinctive arrangement and the unfinished bottle of cognac. Mm. This started sometime in the 1930s. It's not exactly clear what year. Um, And though never firmly identified, it is believed uh, to have been the same man doing this year after year after year until 1998, making this visit every single year shortly after midnight on January 19th. In 1999, a younger man inherited the mantle of Toaster and took over, presumably because the older man got too old or passed on and he decided to. Um, pass the tradition on to the next generation. In 2006, uh, onlookers attempted to detain, identify, and question the new toaster, which is possibly why in 2009, the bicentenary of Poe's birth, the toaster made his final appearance. Wow. In the years following, imposter toasters tried to pick up the torch, but they always were easily identifiable as not the original. They would walk through the crowd and make a show of it rather than keeping distance and secretive and a relatively low profile. They arranged the flowers wrong. They didn't do specific movements or they said the wrong words. There were lots of little details that they missed. Mm. In 2016, the Maryland Historical Society selected a new toaster in an attempt to revive the tradition, but this also seems to have been done more for show than anything else because among other things this new toaster arrives during daylight hours on the weekend nearest to the birthday so that tourists can enjoy the event sure one man did claim to have been the original toaster but inconsistencies in his story lead most historians and poe enthusiasts to think that he's just trying to claim credit for someone else's shtick so the identity of the poe toaster remains a mystery a mystery that i think mr poe would have enjoyed yeah (laughs) happy birthday edgar this week emily you will be reading the angel of the odd okay let's start this fire the angel of the odd an extravaganza by Edgar Allan Poe. Okay, an extravaganza. An extravaganza. I do like it when stories have a subtitle. Yeah, he's like... They just sort of I, let you know what you're in for. Yeah. It's confident. He's like, this is going to be an extravaganza. I this guarantee is, this it. This is going to be <laughs> wild, y'all. He's got some hubris. Rightfully And so. if it's wild by Poe standards... Whoo! Let's dive in. <clears throat> it was a chilly November afternoon. I had just consummated an unusually hearty dinner, of which the dispep consummated. Wow. Okay. You were really going after that food. All right, yeah. my man. Okay, you American pied it. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> we're right out the gate. It's one of those words that doesn't mean the same thing anymore. <laughs> All right. He had just consummated a dinner. Okay. Yeah, you did. <laughs> of which the dyspeptic truff formed not the least important item. Dyspeptic. Truff? Truff. Like truffle, I guess? Yes. 
truff is a truffle. Okay. Okay. Of which the dyspeptic truff. Yeah, what's that? Of or having indigestion or consequent irritability or depression. So spicy. Spicy or hard to digest truffle. Hey, a spicy truffle. (laughs) Of which... (laughs) That's a spicy truffle. <laughs> you got a hand. <laughs> of which the dyspeptic truff formed not the least important item, and was sitting alone in the dining room with my feet upon the fender, and at my elbow a small table which I had rolled up to the fire, and upon which were some apologies for dessert. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Here's an apple pie. <laughs> upon which were some apologies for dessert with some miscellaneous bottles of wine, spirit, and liqueur. In the morning, so, I... <laughs> so, my apologies for dessert makes oh. me think of, like, some sorry excuses for dessert. And that combined with I dyspeptic so. truffle and having consummated dinner makes me think that this meal was, like... No bueno. Not great. Yeah, no bueno. Nope. <laughs> Although he does say it. Well, actually, yeah, you're right. Because then he goes on to say, with some miscellaneous bottles of wine, spirit, and liqueur. So, like, whatever was left in the house. We just... Right. It was a, it was like a, a, a New Jersey turnpike, where you take all the leftover drops in the bar, and you put them in a glass. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Disgusting. I hope that drink is not legendary. I don't know of anyone who's ever made it or had it, but I hope it's not a real drink. I wouldn't risk it. No. <laughs> In the morning, I had been reading Glover's Leonidas, Wilkie's Epignoniad, Ep- Epignoniad. Okay. These are just titles of books. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lamartine's Pilgrimage, Barlow's Columbiad, Tuckerman's Sicily, and Griswold's Curiosities. I am willing to confess, therefore, that I now felt a little stupid. <laughs> I made effort to arouse myself. Mm-hmm. By aid After of frequent... consummating with dinner, yeah, you're going to need to. Yep. <laughs> By aid of frequent Lafitte and all failing, I betook myself to a stray newspaper in despair. Having carefully perused the column of Houses to Let and the column of Dogs Lost. Oh, no! Oh, no. And then the two columns of Wives and Apprentices Run Away. <laughs> <laughs> run away wives. <laughs> He's looking for rental property, yep. lost dogs, yep. and and wives and employees who have who fled, escaped. Fled their owners. <laughs> oh, my God. Wow. Man, the newspaper was way cooler back then. I I don't know. That doesn't sound good to me. (laughs) I can see why he took to it in despair. (laughs) There's an entire column about runaway brides? I don't know. That's pretty cool. (laughs) I attacked with great resolution the editorial matter, and reading it from beginning to end without understanding a syllable, conceived the possibility of its being Chinese. And so reread it from the end to the beginning, but with no more satisfactory result. I was about throwing away in disgust this folio of four pages, happy work which not even critics criticize, when I felt my attention somewhat aroused by the paragraph which follows. So he's like, this newspaper is shit, except for this part. Except for this one paragraph. <laughs> yeah. Mixed in with the missing dogs and the. <laughs> well, like, of course it's wives. shit, though. You read it backwards. Right? <laughs> and <laughs> drunk. I can't. (laughs) From an assortment of miscellaneous liquors. Okay. (laughs) The avenues to death are numerous and strange. A London paper mentions the decease of a person from a singular cause. He was playing at Puff the Dart, which is played with a long needle inserted in some worsted and blown at a target through a tin tube. He placed the needle at the wrong end of the tube and drawing his breath strongly to puff the dart forward with force, drew the needle into his throat. It entered the lungs and in a few days killed him. Oh, God. Okay. (laughs) This is horrifying. What? (laughs) New fear unlocked. (laughs) (laughs) Well, just don't don't ever try to shoot a blow dart and you'll be fine. Yeah, you're right. I'm I'm never doing that. (laughs) Upon seeing this, I fell into a great rage without exactly knowing why. (laughs) Because it's horrifying. 
This thing, I exclaimed, is a contemptible falsehood, a poor hoax, the lees of the invention of some pitiable penny aligner, of some wretched concoctor of accidents in cocaine. Spelled with a G, so I think it's a place. <laughs> these, <laughs> these fellows, knowing the extravagant gullibility of the age, set their wits to work in the imagination of improbable possibilities, of odd accidents, as they term them. But to a reflecting intellect, like mine, I added in parenthesis, putting my forefinger unconsciously to the side of my nose. <laughs> what a visual. <laughs> oh, God, he's a dick even when he's alone. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> but to a reflecting intellect like mine, to a contemplative understanding such as I myself possess, it seems evident at once that the marvelous increase of late in these odd accidents is by far the oddest accident of all. For my own part, I intend to believe nothing henceforward that has anything of the singular about it. So he's railing against clickbait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, this is bullshit. Mein Gott, den what a fool you bees for that, replied one of the most remarkable voices I ever heard. You're damn <laughs> right, it's remarkable. <laughs> At first, I took it for a rumbling in my ears, such as a man sometimes experiences when getting very drunk. But upon second thought, <laughs> I, considered the, <laughs> I considered the sound as more nearly resembling that which proceeds from an empty barrel beaten with a big stick. And in fact, this I should have concluded it to be, but for the articulation of the syllables and words. I am by no means naturally nervous, and the very few glasses of Lafitte which I had sipped served to embolden me look no little so that I felt nothing of trepidation, but merely uplifted my eyes with a leisurely movement and looked carefully around the room for the intruder. I could not, however, perceive anyone at all. Oof, resumed the voice as I continued my survey. <laughs> you must be so drunk as de pig then, for not see me as I sit here at your side. <laughs> Hereupon I bethought me of looking immediately before my nose, and there, sure enough, confronting me at the table, sat a personage nondescript, although not altogether indescribable. His body was a wine pipe, or a rum puncheon, or something of that character, and had a truly Falstaffian air. <laughs> In its nether extremity were inserted two kegs. Excuse me? Um. Excuse me? Okay. In its nether extremity were inserted two kegs, which seemed to answer all the purposes of legs. For arms, there dangled from the upper portion of the carcass two tolerably long bottles, with the necks outward for hands. All the head that I saw the monster possessed of was one of those Hessian canteens, which resemble a large snuff box with a hole in the middle of the lid. This canteen, with a funnel on its top, like a cavalier cap slouched over the eyes, was set on edge upon the puncheon, with the hole toward myself. And through this hole, which seemed puckered up like the mouth of a very precise old maid, the creature was emitting certain rumbling and grumbling noises, which he evidently intended for intelligible talk. I say, said he, you must be drunk as the pig, for zit there and not see me zit here, and I say do you must be bigger fool as the goose, for to disbelieve what is print in the print, tis the truth that it is every word of it. <laughs> this is so hard to read, listener. Um Okay, this is so hard to read. It is written cuckoo. Mad respect for Thank your you. exceptional work getting through this this written in dialect nonsense. <laughs> Thank you very much. I don't know if it's intelligible. I hope on a listen back it is. I'm doing my best. <laughs> it, it is. It's coming out very well. Okay, great, great. <laughs> She's like, you dumb. She's like, you must be drunk as fuck to not know what's going on. <laughs> yep. <laughs> to not believe what's printed right in front right. of you. It's it, Every word is true. <laughs> Right. Oh, it's actually a guy, but, uh, you know, gender, whatever. I've made him female. Okay. I, I mean, it's the <laughs> voice of uh, apparently a wine barrel right. with right. bottles and things for appendages. So, yeah, who cares? <laughs> who are you, pray, said I with much dignity, although somewhat puzzled. 
This guy thinks a lot of himself. <laughs> how did you get here? And what is it you are talking about? As for how I come here, replied the figure, that is none of your business. As for what I be talking about, I be talk about what I think proper. And as for who I be, why that is the very thing I come here for to let you see for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> You are a drunken vagabond, said I, <laughs> and I shall ring the bell and order my footman to kick you into the street. All right. He, <laughs> he, said the fellow. <laughs> that you can't do. Can't do, said I. What do you mean? I can't do what? Ring the bell, he replied, attempting a grin with his little villainous mouth. <laughs> Upon this, I made an effort to get up in order to put my threat into execution, but the ruffian just reached across the table very deliberately, and hitting me a tap on the forehead with the neck of one of the long bottles, knocked me back into the armchair from which I had half arisen. I was utterly astounded, and for a moment was quite at a loss what to do. In the meantime, he continued his talk. You see, said he, it is the best for sit still, and now you shall know who I be. Look at me, see, I am the angel of the odd. And odd enough, too, I ventured to reply. <laughs> <laughs> he's a tree, he's a, he's a witty guy. But I was always under the impression that an angel had wings. The wing? He cried, highly incensed. What I be do with the wing, my God? Do you take me for a chicken? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> Wait, I, I don't know what the scared him just said. Hold on, let me try this again. <laughs> Oh, okay. So it was actually very clear when it heard was? out loud. Yes. Oh, okay. The wing... I what I uh, what I be doing with the wing, with the my, wing. God, my God, do you, you take, take me, me for a chicken? chicken? Okay, okay, good, 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 okay. Yeah. I'm phonetically sounding it out, and I <laughs> don't know if it's making sense. Okay, yeah, yeah. It's, right. it, like, it, it, it really is. <laughs> so, do you take me for a chicken, says this, uh, is, this incensed German um, angel of the odd? <laughs> no, oh, no, I replied, much alarmed. You are no chicken, certainly not. Well, then, sit still and behave yourself, or I'll wrap you again with me vest. It is the chicken and the wing, and the owl and the wing, and the imp and the wing, and the head tuffel and the wing, the angel um, uh, have, ab is half. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I'm doing it again. All right. Well, then, sit still and behave yourself, or I'll wrap you again with me vest. It is the chicken of the wing, and the owl of the wing, and the imp of the wing, and the head tuffle of the wing, the angel of not the wing, and I am the angel of the odd. There are times when it sounds a little bit like you're doing a it, Jamaican Jamaican, accent. correct, correct. I heard it and I was like, well, here I am. Here I am. I mean, you're just you're just reading reading the letters that are on the page. Uh, I'm like, damn Washington, stick onto me foot. It, it does sound Jamaican. It really does. That's from um, Playboy of the West Indies. I will never forget that line. We did it in dialect class. Um, okay. And your business with me at present is, is my business, ejaculated the thing. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> oh, we got one. There it is. Yay. <laughs> oh, it I has been a one. long time. It has been a long time since this podcast had a good ejaculation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm really, really happy yeah. to have one. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> I am a firm believer that ejaculations need to come more frequently. <laughs> Yeah. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> Just thinking about your internet footprint. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate someone looking out for it. <laughs> My business, ejaculated the thing, 
Why, what a low-bred puppy you must be for to ask a gentleman and an angel about his business. <laughs> this language was rather more than I could bear, even from an angel. So, plucking up courage, I seized a salt cellar which lay within reach and hurled it at the head of the intruder. Either he dodged, however, or my aim was inaccurate, for all I accomplished was the demolition of the crystal which protected the dial of the clock upon the mantelpiece. And as for the angel... He evinced his sense of my assault by giving me two or three hard consecutive raps upon the forehead as before. <laughs> These reduced me at once to submission, and I am almost ashamed to confess that either through pain or vexation, there came a few tears into my eyes. Oh, <laughs> oh it's getting the better of him. My God, said the angel of the odd, apparently much softened at my distress. My God, the man is either very drunk or very sorry. You must not drink it so strong. You must put the water in the wine. Here, drink this like a good feller. And don't cry now, don't. Hereupon, the angel of the odd replenished my goblet, which was about a third full of port, with a colorless fluid that he poured from one of his hand bottles. <laughs> um, <laughs> He's giving him that colorless fluid. <laughs> he just ejaculated, dude. Yeah. Yeah. I observed that these bo- he's trying to hydrate him. <laughs> I observed that these bottles had labels about their necks and that these labels were inscribed Kirschenwasser. The considerate kindness of the angel mollified me in no little measure, and aided by the water with which he diluted my port more than once, I at length regained sufficient temper to listen to his very extraordinary discourse. I cannot pretend to recount all that he told me, but I gleaned from what he said that he was the genius who presided over the contretemps of mankind, and whose business it was to bring about the odd accidents which are continually astonishing the skeptic. Once or twice, upon my venturing to express my total incredulity in respect to his pretensions, he grew very angry indeed, so that at length I considered it the wiser policy to say nothing at all, and let him have his own way. He talked on, therefore, at great length, while I merely leaned back in my chair with my eyes shut and amused myself with munching raisins and filliping the stems about the room. (laughs) 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 Filliping the stems about the room. The stems of the raisins? So they must still be grapes, no? Well, or I think, um, I think, once upon a time, raisins were allowed to become raisins still on the oh vine. yeah they, they just yeah you're right they just were like let them shrivel um, the sun. but got it filiping i think it's f- flipping no like that's just Probably. an extra eye yeah filiping archaic to propel a small object with a flick of the finger <laughs> yeah and it's yeah it's philip yeah cute um, okay. So he, he amused himself with munching raisins and filliping the stems about the room. So wait, this angel is telling this skeptical dude, like, I'm the one who's making all these sp- spooky things in the papers happen, right? Yes. Yeah, Presumably yeah. he's visited him because he's like, I don't believe any of this stuff in the paper. But this angel's like, I'm the one doing it. It's real. Yeah, yeah that's it. what it sounds like. Yeah. The angel suddenly construed this behavior of mine into contempt. He arose in a terrible passion, slouched his funnel down over his eyes, swore a vast oath, uttered a threat of some character which I did not precisely comprehend, and finally made me a low bow and a pardon, wishing me, in the language of the archbishop in Gil Blas, beaucoup de bon heu et un peu plus de bon sang. I don't speak French, but that was my best. (laughs) His departure afforded me relief. The very few glasses of Lafitte that I had sipped had the effect of rendering me drowsy, and I felt inclined to take an... (laughs) He keeps impressing how little alcohol he's had, but I'm like, it sounds like you have actually had quite a bit. That's the thing, is he's had a little alcohol. I was barely drunk. I was barely drunk. But he had a little alcohol, and then another little alcohol, and then another little alcohol, and (laughs) then another little alcohol. Uh, Also, I think the French sentence that the Angel of the Odds said was something about um, uh, wishing me uh, many a good hour and a little good sense. Okay. Good. Yep. That's great. 
Yes. Thank you. <laughs> so, the very few glasses of Lafitte that I had sipped had the effect of rendering me drowsy, and I felt inclined to take a nap of some 15 or 20 minutes, as is my custom after dinner. At six, I had an appointment of consequence, which it was quite indispensable that I should keep. The policy of insurance for my dwelling house had expired the day before, and some dispute having arisen, it was agreed that at six, I should meet the board of directors of the company and settle the terms of renewal. Glancing upward at the clock on the mantelpiece, for I felt too drowsy to take out my watch, I had the pleasure to find that I had still 25 minutes to spare. It was half past five. I could easily walk to the insurance office in five minutes, and my usual siestas had never been no... Okay, it's got a little, it's got a little Spanish flair there. Yeah. <laughs> and my usual siesta... This, this, this whole story is just uh, Poe showing off that he's a polyglot. Right. I'm like, okay, look at all these languages. <laughs> Uh, and my usual siestas had never been known to exceed five and twenty. I felt sufficiently safe, therefore, and composed myself to my slumbers forthwith. Having completed them to my satisfaction, I again looked toward the timepiece and was half inclined to believe in the possibility of odd accidents when I found that, instead of my ordinary fifteen or twenty minutes, I had been dozing only three, for it still wanted seven and twenty of the appointed hour. I betook myself again to my nap, and at length a second time awoke when, to my utter amazement, it still wanted twenty-seven minutes of six. I jumped up to examine the clock and found that it had ceased running. My watch informed me that it was half past seven, and of course, whoops. having slept... Whoops. <laughs> been there. And of course, having slept... <laughs> <laughs> One time when I was at UNC, I was taking, a, you know, that, that grad school life. I was taking a nap during our dinner break, and the stage manager had to come into the grad student lounge and wake me up and be like, Emily, rehearsal started five minutes ago. And I was like, what? Oh my God. Oh my God. I just like ran to the rehearsal hall without my bag or any of my script, anything. And I was like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> they were like, we've all been there. It's fine. Yep. At least it didn't happen during a show. I, I have heard the, uh, the legends of people who have like slept through call and like missed their time to actually be on stage, which was terrifying. <laughs> There's um, a story <laughs> about, um, I, I don't know. I don't know that it's true. So I'm not, I am not calling him out with this, but the story I have heard is that um, during one of his first performances of Wicked on Broadway, when Joey McIntyre was going on as Fiero, he missed his entrance because he was sitting in his dressing room watching the Sox game. No. Because he's, oh. he's, he's a kid from Boston and a huge baseball fan. <laughs> I mean that's that story is still endearing somehow. I'm <laughs> like that's cute. <laughs> and so like because oh, he no. makes he makes his first entrance, he gets like pulled on on that that like um, cart thing, and it turns around and there's Fiero, right? And so oh, the cart no. went on and it turned around and there was no one there. I'm sweating thinking about being on the stage. <laughs> I'm like, how do you recover from that? Oh my god. Woo! Theater! Live theater! I love it. I miss it. It's crazy. Um, okay. <laughs> so, of course, having slept two hours, I was too late for my appointment. It will make no difference, I said. I can call at the office in the morning and apologize. In the meantime, what can be the matter with the clock? <laughs> See, he didn't give a fuck. He's like, whatever. <laughs> this okay, clock. Right. Upon examining it, I discovered that one of the raisin stems, which I had been filliping about the room during the discourse of the Angel of the Odd, had flown through the fractured crystal and lodging, singularly enough, in the keyhole, with an eye projecting outward, had thus arrested the revolution of the minute hand. <laughs> <laughs> the filliping comes back. Ah, said I, I see how it is. This thing speaks for itself, a natural accident, such as will happen now and then. I gave the matter no further consideration, and at my usual hour, yeah, totally normal. And at totally my usual, normal. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and at my usual hour, I retired to bed. Here, having placed a candle upon a reading stand at the bedhead, he <laughs> bedhead, <laughs> <laughs> and having made an attempt to peruse some pages of the omnipresence of the deity. I unfortunately fell asleep in less than 20 seconds, leaving the light burning as it was. <clears throat> oh, boy. <laughs> These all My... sound like the actions of a 
only slightly drunk man. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> a very few glasses of Lafitte. He's drunk and he's still like, but I read. I read, though. Here's another book that I read. <laughs> All these fancy <Yeah>. titles. <laughs> Never mind the rather obvious metaphor of a an angel built of drinking equipment literally punching him in the head with one mm -hmm. of his bottle hands. Sure, sure, yeah. He had to be smacked across the face with the symbolism and he's still yeah. not accepting it. <laughs> My dreams were terrifically disturbed by visions of the angel of the odd. Methought he stood at the foot of the couch, drew aside the curtains, and in the hollow, detestable tones of a rum puncheon, menaced me with the bitterest vengeance for the contempt with which I had treated him. He concluded a long harangue by taking off his funnel cap, inserting the tube into my gullet, and thus deluging me with an ocean of Kirschenwasser, which he poured in a continuous flood from one of the long-necked bottles that stood him instead of an arm. <laughs> Is this the most rapey thing? Oh my god. My agony was at length insufferable, and I awoke just in time to perceive that a rat had ran off with the lighted candle from the stand, <laughs> but not in season to prevent his making his escape with it through the hole. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay, chaos. Very soon, a strong suffocating odor assailed my nostrils. The house, I clearly perceived, was on fire. <laughs> in a few minutes, the blaze broke forth with violence, and in an incredibly brief period, the entire building was wrapped in flames. All egress from my chamber, except through a window, was cut off. The crowd, however, quickly procured and raised a long ladder. By means of this, I was descending rapidly, and in apparent safety, when a huge hog, about whose rotund stomach, and indeed about whose whole air and physiognomy physiognomy there was something which reminded me of the angel of the odd when this <laughs> hog <laughs> when this hog i say which hitherto had been quietly slumbering in the mud took it suddenly into his head that his left shoulder needed scratching and could find no more convenient rubbing post than that afforded by the foot of the ladder in an instant i was precipitated and had the misfortune to fracture my arm <laughs> Oh, my God. This is a story about a guy who cannot catch a break. He can't catch a break. <laughs> this poor dude. This accident with the loss of my insurance and with the more serious loss of my hair, the whole of which had been singed off by the fire, <laughs> but now he's bald and sad and has no insurance. <laughs> Sounds like America. Uh... <laughs> um, Let's see predisposed me to serious impressions so that finally I made up my mind to take a wife. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he said. He said, this is the answer I'm going to take. I'm going to take up a wife. <laughs> there was a rich widow disconsolate for the loss of her seventh husband. <laughs> and to her wounded spirit, I offered the balm of my vows. She yielded a reluctant consent to my prayers. <laughs> wow, buddy. Okay. <laughs> I knelt at her feet in gratitude and adoration. She blushed and bowed her luxuriant tresses into close contact with those supplied me temporarily by Grand Jean. So he's got a wig on? <laughs> he's got a wig on, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Grand Jean. Uh, I, <laughs> I, just for a minute, until he clarified that he had borrowed a wig, <laughs> I, I had it in my head that he's lying on the ground having just had all of his hair burned off and his arm broken. And he's like, this sucks. I'm going to get a wife. And he stands up and go proposes to this rich widow, like in the moment. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, could be, but like, I know I smell like smoke and alcohol. I've only had a very little bit to drink. I promise. Just a little. And, and I know my arm is broken. <laughs> Yeah, do you want an eighth husband? <laughs> oh, God. I know not how the entanglement took place, but so it was. I rose with a shining pate, wigless. She in disdain and wrath, half buried in alien hair. <laughs> Wait, what? I have to go back. I don't know what's happening with this hair. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Go, go back to the okay. sentence before. It'll make more sense. <laughs> okay, wait. 
So there's a rich widow, and to her wounded spirit, I offered the bomb my vows. She consented reluctantly. <laughs> this guy's not a catch. I knelt at her feet in gratitude and adoration. She blushed and bowed her luxuriant tresses into close contact with those supplied me temporarily by Grand Jean. I know not how the entanglement took place, I see, but so it was. I arose with a shining pate, wigless, she in disdain and wrath, half buried in alien hair. <laughs> oh, this is funny now. <laughs> funny how when you read it correctly, it's funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thus ended my hopes of the widow by an accident which could not have been anticipated, to be sure, but which the natural sequence of events had brought about. And this guy can't catch a break. <laughs> this is so sad. All right, like leave him alone, Angel. It's enough. <laughs> I feel like this 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 story's subtitle should be "My Worst Day Ever." <laughs> or like that um that music that they play in Family Guy when Chris is walking. Boom 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 boom. boom. Just like the sad tuba. Just like yeah. the, the sad tuba music. <laughs> Or the no good, very bad, the, the awful, very, yeah. horrible, no good, very no good, bad very day. Bad day. <laughs> Without despairing, however, all right, he's staying positive. I would have been despairing long ago. Without despairing, however, I undertook the siege of a less implacable heart. The fates were again propitious for a brief period, but again, a trivial incident oh. interfered. Meeting my betrothed, oh God, meeting my betrothed in an avenue thronged with the elite of the city, I was hastening to greet her with one of my best considered bows, when a small particle of some foreign matter lodging in the corner of my eye rendered me for the moment completely blind. <laughs> Before I could recover my sight, the lady of my love had disappeared, irreparably affronted at what she chose to consider my premeditated rudeness in passing her by ungreeted. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> while i stood bewildered at the suddenness of this accident which might have happened nevertheless to anyone under the sun and while i still continued incapable of sight i was accosted by the angel of the odd who proffered me his aid with a civility which i had no reason to expect he examined my disordered eye with much gentleness and skill informed me that i had a drop in it and whatever a drop was took it out and afforded me relief no. Oh. All right. Well, that was nice. Uh, yeah. I now considered it high time to die. <laughs> well, <laughs> like, I'm done. Yeah, I'm thrown in the towel. I had a fucking eyelash in my eye. That is the last fucking straw. <laughs> Oh my god. Well, I think I got to I got to oh, imagine so that the great. last straw is actually the realization <laughs> that he's like either I am being haunted by yep. a fucking mischief <laughs> demon. Yep. Or I have oh. had so much to drink that I am now <laughs> hallucinating this fucker. It's true. <laughs> either either way, way, it's not good. I quit. I quit. Yeah, I quit. I I'm quit. done. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> I now considered it high time to die, since fortune had so determined to persecute me, and accordingly made my way to the nearest river. <laughs> I don't know why it's so funny. <laughs> oh my god. Here, oh god. Here, divesting myself of my clothes, for there is no reason why we cannot die as we were born. <laughs> sure. Sure, sure. Good good little um, philosophical thought in there. I threw myself headlong into the current, the sole witness of my fate being a solitary crow that had been seduced into the eating of brandy-saturated corn, and so had staggered away from his fellows. <laughs> what? Who's <laughs> soaking corn in brandy? And giving it to one crow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. So not only hey is this there, guy crow. like... You want to come over here and eat some brandy corn? No, I don't Try like it. it. No. You'll like it. Get away from me in your van. Get away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. So it's him and a drunk crow, huh? That's com wow. a completely unnecessary version of Stranger oh. in a Van with Candy. 
Yeah, totally. <laughs> totally. Brandy sat. Who's eating corn soaked in brandy? I mean, these were hard times. These were hard times. Hang on. I'm going to I'm going to look it up and see if that's a thing. Oh god. You can make a brandy style moonshine from corn. Oh. So, so it's that's possible that that yeah, that he was um that that the crow was like eating the corn mash that was supposed to be turned into a brandy <laughs> and got drunk. Oh, it's great. That's great. And it staggered away from its fellows and came yep. upon the saddest, baldest man in the world committing suicide <laughs> in a river, naked as the day he was born. Woo! What an image. <laughs> so, no sooner had I entered the water than this bird took it into its head to fly away with my most indispensable portion of my apparel. Postponing, therefore, for the present, my suicidal design, I just slipped my nether extremities into the sleeves of my coat <laughs> and betook myself to a pursuit of the felon with all the nimbleness which the case required and its circumstances would you pulled your coat admit. on over your legs? Yeah, and, and also, would the bird take his toupee? Maybe. What did he, he just said he was naked. Divesting myself of my clothes, I threw myself headlong into the current. Yeah, this bird took took it onto its head to fly away with the most indispensable portion of my apparel. I think it took his hair again, although I didn't know he <laughs> had hair again. <laughs> I don't know. So now he's running around with his legs in the sleeves of his coat. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it took myself to a pursuit of the villain. But my evil destiny... <laughs> My evil destiny attended me still. <laughs> As I ran at full speed with my nose up in the atmosphere and intent only upon the purloiner of my property, I suddenly perceived that my feet rested no longer upon terra firma. The fact is, I had thrown myself over a precipice and should inevitably have been dashed to pieces, but for my good fortune in grasping the end of a long guide rope, which depended from a passing balloon. <laughs> what? <laughs> so he's like, why the coyote again? Like, he's just like, in midair on a balloon string? Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Oh. As soon as I sufficiently recovered my senses to comprehend the terrific predicament in which I stood, or rather hung, <laughs> I exerted all the power of my lungs to make that predicament known to the aeronaut overhead. But for a long time, I exerted myself in vain. Either the fool could not, or the villain would not, perceive me. Meantime, the machine rapidly soared, while my strength even more rapidly failed. I was soon upon the point of resigning myself to my fate and dropping quietly into the sea, when my spirits were suddenly revived by hearing a hollow voice from above, which seemed to be lazily humming an opera air. Looking up, I perceived, say with me, everybody, the angel the of angel the of odd. The, odd. <laughs> the angel of the odd. <laughs> who is German and Jamaican. <laughs> he can't he decide. He can't decide. He was leaning with his arms folded over the rim of the car and with a pipe in his mouth at which he puffed leisurely, seemed to be upon excellent terms with himself and the universe. <laughs> I was too much exhausted to speak, so I merely regarded him with an imploring air. For would several minutes... Would it be Jamaican? Jamaican, thank you. Yes. Jamaican? Jamaican. <laughs> yeah. Which works both as a portmanteau yeah. and as the first half of the sentence, Jamaican me crazy. I hate you. I hate you. <laughs> and that's it, folks. You're so proud of that. The podcast is over. You're so proud of that we one. We had a good run. <laughs> God, I'm joking. Oh, God. Oh, okay. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> so what is happening?
everything tonight. Fucking hell. Woo! <laughs> okay. <laughs> For several minutes. So he's flying through the air on a balloon. For several minutes. Yep. The angels is looking at him. Although he looked me full in the face, he said nothing. <laughs> at length, removing carefully his meerschaum from the right to the left corner of his mouth, he condescended to speak. Will you get the data? What is a meerschaum? I'm looking for it. I'm going to go with his pipe. Ah, removing it from the right to the left corner of his mouth. Yep. Yep. A meerschaum pipe is a smoking pipe made from the mineral sepia light. Hmm. You know what's so sad? I'm such a product of the current day that my first thought was, oh, his mask. He's moving his mask. He's taking his mask off from the left <laughs> to the right. Oh, I hate it. God. He condescended to speak. Who be you? He asked. Und what? Der tooth you be do there. <laughs> Sorry, this I don't know. Okay, wait. Who be you? Und what? The tooth you be do there. Nope. Did. Do you want me to give it to you, or do you want me to try to try to read it in the dialect? Who be, yeah, you try, you try. Who be Who you? Who be you, he asked, und fat der Toffel, you pi du dare. What the devil are you doing What the here? devil? Toffel got me. That's devil. Yep. Okay. Und what der Toffel, you pi du dare. What the devil you be doing there? Got it. Thank you. <laughs> that would yep. need a little, little translation. <laughs> To this piece of impudence, cruelty, and affectation, I could reply only by ejaculating the monosyllable, help! <laughs> Ejaculate it again in midair, flying from a balloon. So, you know. Wow. Sorry to everyone down on the ground. He's over the sea, though. So oh, okay, okay. Unless Sorry, there fish. are sailors underneath. Seamen. Uh, unless there are seamen underneath. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you very much. I'll be here all week. Help! Echoed the ruffian. Not I. Dare is the bottle. Help yourself and be damned. Okay, we've got a searing allegory about alcoholism here. Now it's all coming to the now it's all coming to the forefront. With these words he let fall a heavy bottle of Kirschenwasser, which, dropping precisely upon the crown of my head, caused me to imagine that my brains were entirely knocked out. Impressed with this idea, I was about to relinquish my hold and give up the ghost with a good grace when I was arrested by the cry of the angel, who bade me hold on. Hold on, he said. Don't be in the hurry. Don't. Will you be take the other bottle, or have you be got sober yet and come to your senses? <laughs> <laughs> I made haste. <laughs> I made haste hereupon to nod my head twice, once in the negative, meaning thereby that I would prefer not taking the other bottle at present, <laughs> literally in midair, <laughs> and once in the affirmative, intending thus to imply that I was sober and had positively come to my senses. By these means, I somewhat softened the angel. Und you believe, then, he inquired, at the last, you believe, then, in the possibility of the odd? I again nodded my head in assent. Would you have belief in me, the angel of the art? I nodded again. Would you acknowledge that you be think blind, drunk, and de fool? I nodded once more. Put your right hand into your left hand, breeches pocket, then, in token of your full submission unto the angel of the art. This thing, for very obvious reasons, I found it quite impossible to do. In the first place, my left arm had been broken in my fall from the ladder, and therefore, had I let go my hold with the right hand, I must have let go altogether. In the second place, I could have no breaches until I came across the crow. <laughs> the crow stole his clothes. <laughs> Oh, that's what the crow stole his pants, oh, which is why clothes. he put his coat around his yep. waist. Yep, I got it okay. now. <laughs> it's all coming together. I So he's like, dude, I can't do this for many reasons. <laughs> I was therefore obliged, much to my regret, to shake my head in the negative, intending thus to give the angel to understand that I found it inconvenient just at that moment to comply with his very reasonable demand. No sooner, however, had I ceased shaking my head than, 
Go to the devil, then, roared the angel of the odd. In pronouncing these words, he drew a sharp knife across the guide rope by which I was suspended, and as we then happened to be precisely over my own house, which during my peregrinations had been handsomely rebuilt, it so occurred that I tumbled headlong down the ample chimney and alit upon the dining room hearth. <laughs> Upon coming to my senses, for the fall had very thoroughly stunned me, I found it about four o'clock in the morning. I lay outstretched where I had fallen from the balloon. <laughs> my head groveled in the ashes of an extinguished fire, while my feet reposed upon the wreck of a small table, overthrown, and amid the fragments of a miscellaneous dessert, intermingled with a newspaper, some broken glass and shattered bottles, and an empty jug of the Scheidam Kirschenwasser. Thus revenged himself. The Angel of the Odd. The end. Yes. <laughs> Yay. That, that was awesome. was utter insanity. <laughs> oh, it was so funny. Wow. I love that. I love that. <laughs> All right. So just, just, uh, just to be clear, are we in agreement that this entire story took place in one evening? Yeah, I think so. Like, the entire thing was his drunken hallucination. Yeah, I think so. And when he woke up at four o'clock in the morning, he woke up, like, hung over. Asleep. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I think so. From the first night. And it did not take Ugh. the weeks and weeks that it, okay. Cool, cool. <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, which would make sense, like you were saying before. You were like, I picture him, like, falling off the ladder after getting out of his burning house. And then immediately stumbling over to the first woman he sees and being like, marry me. Like, that, yeah. that all checks yeah. out. <laughs> yeah, I well, think time, why... time got a little funny in the story. Yeah. yeah. Well, and it's why he was so, like, calm about, well, that sucked. Well, so I decided to kill myself. Right. <laughs> oh, God. That was great. Wow. Whew. So, so kids, learn your lesson from Poe. Don't drink, I guess. Don't drink. Just don't drink, period. Not, not even don't drink and drive. Just don't do it Just at all. Just don't drink. <laughs> Definitely don't drink and hot air balloon. Oh, my lordy. Oh, my lordy. That was, that. I mean, that is a really <laughs> funny detail. That the angel's like, the only way I'm going to help you out is if you will, like, put your right hand on your heart. And he's like, I'm literally holding onto a balloon in the middle of the air with my right hand. I can't do it right now. And he's like, fuck you. <laughs> oh, funny. Bye. Oh, God. <laughs> That is good stuff. I think, you know, for Poe, who I always think of as, you know, so dark and ooky spooky, that's a really fun one to read on his birthday. Yeah. Thanks, Poe. I'm glad you were well, born. And I think the last Poe one we did on this podcast was- That one was the, silly, too. Was The Devil in the Belfry. The, uh-huh. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Which oh was God. also, which I picked intending it to be kind of a scary one for Halloween. And yeah. Nope. <laughs> Oh my God! Yeah, he's a he's a wacky guy. He's a wacky wacky. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that was great. And we got some ejaculations in there. And we finally got some eject twice. Oh, I love it. I love it. I mean, when Two. you first when you first like asked me to lo long ago when I met you when you first asked me to do the podcast, you were like explaining the premise. You were like, "Oh, it's campfire classics," and you know we read stories, and you know lots of funny things happen to come up, like you know unintentional like things that wouldn't be PC now, and like words that don't mean the same thing, such as "ho," oh, he ejaculated. Like that's that was the prime example of something that is so funny because it just means something wildly different now. Yep. And since then, I've been like, I hope I get an ejaculate in one of the stories, <laughs> and I finally did. Yeah, you got two ejaculations in under an hour. Well it done. Feels, thank That's you very good. much. I know. It feels like a rite of passage. I'm, <laughs> man, I'm exhausted. I got to go to sleep now. Whew, I'm worn out. <laughs> what, a, what a satisfactory podcast. I'm very satisfied. <laughs> good, good. That's, you know, we, we, we do aim to please here at Campfire Class. Oh, you're so filthy. You're so filthy. This is not wholesome <laughs> content. <laughs> Uh, well, listeners, thank you for uh, indulging all this silliness. Lots of silliness. <laughs> oh, yeah. I feel better. I always feel better after reading one of these stories. Yeah, this is fun. I like this it when they fun. get silly. <laughs> 
All right. Uh, well, thank you for uh, Emily for reading. That was great fun. Thank you, Camper, for joining us. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that one. Yeah. Um, honestly, if you enjoyed that half as much as I did, you just had a really good hour. So. Seriously. I'm, I'm very uh, glad to be back. Yeah. This, this podcast is so fun. Always a pleasure to have you here. Um, so as always, please do, uh, you know, like us on those social media platforms. If you haven't already done that, you know, subscribe to us on whatever mm-hmm. your your podcast catcher app is. Um, yeah. Shoot us messages at 5050artsproduction at gmail.com or on any of the social medias. You just find Campfire Classics or Campfire Classics podcast uh, and say hi yeah. and let us know what you thought and you know yeah, give us, I'm, give, I'm at m bosk be my friend send me messages <laughs> yeah yeah go track down emily too uh, mm-hmm. i'll go i'll if i remember i'll i'll add your your uh your handle thingy to the yeah doobly do and a doobly do scroobly do doobly boop dingle dangle dongle um <laughs> right I was before this say a thing and i forgot it well, I was going to say right before we were supposed to record this podcast, listeners, I have a whole setup here that allows me to record this remotely with Ken, and it it relies heavily upon the dongle, the the i the Apple dongle that lets you like put a headphone into a Apple device, and I couldn't for the life of me find the dongle, and I was just running around the room going, "Where's the dongle? I can't record without the dongle." And it was like. <laughs> It was a rather serious situation. The The recording of the podcast was in jeopardy, but it was hard to take it seriously because that word's funny. Because <laughs> the word is very funny. Yeah. So <laughs> I found it. Never fear. <laughs> when you message us on. Oh, oh, that's the other thing I was going to say is like go on iTunes or Apple Podcasts or whatever and give us a review and, you know, five stars because that's that. Five stars nice. only. Um, uh, but no, so when you message us or email us somewhere in the body of the email or in the subject, please do include this week's secret passcode. And this week's secret passcode is where's my dongle. <laughs> Love it. Um, that's all for me. Any final thoughts? Stay warm. Wear your masks. I love you all. And on that note, this has been Campfire Classics, where we try to read those books that look really good on your shelf. Bye.